Hi and welcome to this video tutorial on the Local Government Scene solution. Local Government Scenes is a collection of ArcGIS Pro projects that can be used to create and publish a 3D community or city base scene. Local Government Scenes are organized in different department or agency within a local government. Input data required are building footprints and LiDAR and if the point density of the LiDAR is more than three feet or one meter we recommend using the basic local government scene project. But if the point density is less than three meters, sorry, less than three feet or one meter, then we recommend using the schematic local government scene. But first off, let's start with the basic local government scene. It fires up with an empty scene. And the first thing we need to do is publish an elevation layer. So we open up the task and then First step is to create a LAS data set. Now you can use the example data provided or use your own LiDAR data. But make sure that you set the correct coordinate system. So we let it run. And then we have a last data set. Now, as in any LiDAR data set, there might be what we call outliers. These are points, for example, birds or planes or points below the surface that we want to exclude from our LiDAR data set. So we can locate these outliers. We input the last data set and then we can apply um, an absolute Z minimum and an absolute Z maximum. And these values you have to look by eye, you have to see you know, in what range your LiDAR data is and then exclude all points above it and below it. And then we run. So you see there's a number of points there already that are classified as outliers. And we're going to use these points to reclassify the points in the last data set. So you enter the last data set and the outlier feature class, set the new class to 18, which is noise, and then we have fixed a LiDAR, LiDAR data set. Now we're going to create a digital terrain model from our LiDAR data. So we select the last data set and the table of contents and just select two, which is ground, is the two class code. We name our digital train model, give it a nice name, and then make sure that the um, sampling value is about roughly the same size as your point density in the LiDAR. And then the next step is to create a digital surface model. Same thing here, we select the LiDAR data and the table of contents, but then we're going to select the other class codes that represent the surface, which is in this case the unassigned and the buildings. And then we're going to create the DSM. Again, give it a good name. And again, make sure that the uh, sampling value is the same as for the DTM and is approximate the same as your point density of your LiDAR. So now we created two surfaces, which we'll use to create LOD1 buildings. But first we want to publish our DTM. So we can publish this to ArcGIS Online and to Portal. But before we do this, we will have to make sure that the Z values are in meters. So if your data is in feet, Z values in feet, make sure you run this step. So we have a DTM with Z as meters and then um, we also recommend to reproject it to Web Mercator so it loads well in your web scene. So now we have a DTM in meters, Z values in meters, and um, also in Web Mercator. So now we can publish this to ArcGIS Online. So I have to make sure that we're logged into our ArcGIS Online account. And then we can create an elevation tile package. So we give it the elevation source, which is our DTM. And then we can set the minimum cached scale level. Um, in the documentation, you can read a bit more, but typically 12 is good for cities. 
and we give it a cache directory and we let it run. Now this will take a while and this video it has been shortened but it can take up to um, an hour if you have a large terrain model. And then we're going to share this elevation tile package to our ArcGIS online account. So we browse to the directory and there we have our TPK. We give it a summary, we give it some tags and we hit run. Now this gets now shared up to our ArcGIS online account. And then we go there, there it is, and then we can click on it and then we can publish the tile package as an elevation layer on our account. So here you can give it a decent name. And you can enter some tags and you hit publish. So now it starts to generate the cache on uh, ArcGIS Online and we'll leave it there and we'll come back to it later. So as said, we can also publish to Portal for ArcGIS, but this is not yet possible in ArcGIS Pro. So we need to switch to desktop 10.2 uh, or later um, to create an elevation service for Portal. So we right click on the DTM and then make a connection to our Portal. and then we name the service. Now the key thing here is to go into the caching tab and say that we want to use tiles from a cache, use the ArcGIS online uh, tiling scheme and set the level down to 19 and then under the advanced settings we want to set the tile format to lurk and the compression to 0 0.1 or 0 0.05 and then of course you give it a summary and tags and we're going to publish this elevation layer to our portal So there we go, and this is our portal, and we have the layer sitting there. So now on to the next step. Now we want to generate some LOD1 buildings. LOD1 means just simple extruded buildings, for, uh, extruded for building footprints. So we run the Calculate Building Height tool. Now what this tool does, it'll add some attributes to your building footprints, and then we're going to use them later to create the 3D buildings. There is some notes and warnings in the task. Make sure you read them uh, because we do override existing values in that uh, feature class. So we select our building footprint and we select the DTM that we created earlier and we select the DSM that we created earlier. And here of course you can use the DSM and DTM uh, in feet and we can also set a buffer distance. Now this is to get rid of any kind of vegetation influences that might be present when trees overlap, buildings, etc. So we let this run and again depending on the number of buildings this might take some time. And then we can what we call 3D enable our building footprints. So we browse to our building footprints and then we're using a city engine rule and make sure you select the one that's right for your data. So this is the rule package for feet, a Z. And then you name your output multi-patch feature class. And there we have our extruded buildings derived from the LiDAR. Now same thing here, what we want to do is we want to publish the buildings to ArcGIS Online or Portal. So we can 
you know, show them in a web scene and um, share it with the public and other stakeholders. So same thing here, we input our multi-patch uh, feature layer that we just created and then we're gonna give a name for our out output scene layer package. And then we'll share that package to our ArcGIS online account. So enter the SPK, give it a summary and tags, and hit run. And there we have it. There we have our layer sitting in our account and we click on it in ArcGIS Online and then hit the publish button. And here again we can give it a good name and potentially add some more tags and we can publish this scene package layer into a scene layer for our web scene. Now if you want to publish to portal, um, slightly different workflow here. What you need to do is first of all log into your portal of course and make it active and then once we've logged into our portal we're gonna select the building layer that we want to publish and hit run and then the sh sharing dialog pops up and again here we name our uh, building service our building layer give it a summary and tags and we hit publish. So as you see, slightly different workflow for publishing to online or to portal, but the result in the end is exactly the same. And there we have it, there it sits on our portal. So the final layer we're going to extract, if you like, from our LiDAR is um, our trees. So then we click on the Publish 3D tree, Trees task. And then we're going to enter the last data set, uh, point spacing, we already know that was three for this uh, LiDAR, LiDAR data set. Um, vegetation class code. If the vegetation has been classified, then you can enter those codes here. But if if vegetation hasn't been classified, you can enter zero or one. And you can set a buffer distance and the minimum vegetation height and the maximum vegetation height, and it will create us tree points with attributes. And then the next step, of course, is to apply the correct rule package to our tree points and rerun it, and we'll get beautiful 3D trees. So those are the three layers that we generated. So we generated a DTM, a DSM, actually four layers, DTM, DSM, um, extruded building footprints, LOD1 buildings, as we call them, and 3D trees from our LiDAR. Now, the one thing we forgot to do here is to publish the 3D trees. Again, we can publish them to ArcGIS Online or to Portal, and the process is the same as what we did for the buildings. We're creating a scene package locally in our cache directory. And then we're going to share that scene package to our ArcGIS Online account. Now make sure this is what I did wrong initially first. I was still logged into my portal account. So when you want to publish to online, make sure that you're logged into your ArcGIS online account. And same thing here. Uh, we give it a summary, we give it tags, and um, we hit run. Now once it's been uploaded to your ArcGIS online account, again here you need to go there and click on it so we can publish the SPK and make it a tree layer service. Now 
Now, same thing here. So if you want to publish the portal, it's the same process as for public as using uh, that we use for publishing buildings. Um, and then, you know, we've created our three services, if you like, elevation, buildings, and trees. And now we want to bring them together in a web scene. So we can say, create a new scene. We give it a name and tags. And then we're going to add those layers to our web scene. Now, if you gave him some good tags, then you can search for them really quickly. So I gave him a basic scene tag. Spell it correctly. And there we have our three layers. And we add them to the scene. And there we are. Some of the things you can do in the web scene is also turn on shadows and play with the time of day. Um, we can also go into the layer themselves and configure. If you don't like the color, original color came with it, we can configure that in the web scene and overwrite the color. You can also make it semi-transparent and decide whether you want pop-ups or a legend. Um, and then you can further author your web scene. So you can create slides of interesting locations um, or where you want people to go. And then finally, we'll save the web scene. So the web scene is now saved on our ArcGIS online account. And of course, you can still go back in and make edits, for example, change the base map, you can switch to the world imagery. And turn on and off different layers. And there we are, done.